Hello Year 4s and welcome to your RE lesson. Miss Bell has made this PowerPoint video and I am doing the talk over. It's me, Mrs El Hasso. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. So your LO today is to explore how faith is shown in action. So we've got a big question today. What is faith? What does it mean to have faith in someone? Why do we need faith? How might you show you have faith in someone? If you can discuss these questions with a member of your household, pause the video to do so now. So let's have a little look at a definition of faith. Well, first of all, it is a noun if you look in the dictionary, and it means the following a complete trust or confidence in someone or something or a strong belief for a religion. We've got a couple of questions next. Have you ever tried to cross a stream or a big puddle? If you have, how did you get across? Sometimes we need stepping stones to help us get across faith in yourself or God or whatever religion you might follow is like a stepping stone. It helps us to overcome problems big or small. So imagine this river is a problem. You have to take it in small steps and each small step gives you the confidence and ability to overcome your big hurdle or problem. We are going to have a look at a story about David and Goliath. It is from the Christian Bible and it's going to help explore how faith is shown in action. If you want to look it up in the Bible, it's from the book of Samuel, chapter 17. Let's have a little look at the picture first of all, just in case you're not familiar with this story. This is David and this is Goliath. Now straight away we can tell that it's going to be a story about a great battle. Look at all the soldiers in the background standing there with their spears and their arrows and their shields and their armour and this great giant, an amazing warrior called Goliath. Look who he's fighting. A young, small man or child and this boy was called David. He was probably just a teenager. We can see quite the opposite to Goliath. He's dressed in rags. He hasn't got protective armour. All he has is a sling. And in fact, what we'll learn in a bit is that David was just a shepherd, not trained by an army, nobody famous, nobody respected by army generals or kings. But in this story, we find out how David used his faith in God to help him overcome a big problem. An army of Philistines came to Israel to fight King Saul's army. They had a giant soldier called Goliath who wanted to battle with the King Saul's best soldier. Now, during our little PowerPoint, you're going to see lots of different presentations of Goliath. And the reason is because we don't really know what he looks like. Sometimes we see him as a cartoon figure, but remember, he was a great warrior, not a bubble cartoon man, but a really scary, giant, powerful warrior. King Saul's soldiers were afraid and did not want to fight the giant. They knew that they would lose, for many people before had challenged the giant, and nobody had come away successfully with their life. A young boy called David was taking food to his brother, who was a soldier. And as he moved closer, David could hear the giant's challenge. In the Bible, this is what Goliath challenged any of the soldiers. Choose your best soldier and come out and fight me. If he can kill me, our people will be your slaves. But if I kill him, your people will be our slaves. Here and now I challenge Israel's whole army. Choose someone to fight me. Now I've added this little picture of Goliath because I want you to realise how intimidating and scary Goliath would have looked to the average soldier. 
let alone David, a lowly shepherd boy. Just take a moment to imagine this warrior standing there, challenging you to a fight. I don't know about you, but I think I would be a bit frightened. So David told King Saul he would fight the giant. David believed that God would help him. If David were to pray to God at this point, what might he say? What thoughts might be going through David's head? Do you think he'd be afraid? Do you think he'd be confident? Do you think he'd be nervous? How would you feel if you were David? King Saul gave David his armour to wear, but it was too big and heavy for David. David took off the armour and went for a walk by a stream. David picked up five small stones. When Goliath saw David, he laughed, but David did not care. David was sure God would help him defeat the giant. Now, let's just take a little pit look at this picture. We can see here that David had a slingshot and he's got five small stones. Now back in the time when this story took place, it was very common that shepherds who were very poor, who had to be out all night lo looking after their flock, would use a slingshot to protect his flock against wolves who would come and attack for their meat. So David would have been very proficient, which means talented, with his slingshot, and he would have used it regularly to get wolves to stop attacking his sheep. However, we can see Goliath with his weapons of a sword and his great shield did not feel scared and in fact thought it was hilarious that David would be coming to even try to kill him. David put one of the stones he had collected in his sling and flung it as hard as he could at Goliath. He let the stone fly. The stone hit Goliath on the forehead and knocked him out and he fell to the ground, dead. The Philistines saw, saw that their hero was dead and they ran away from Israel. Do you remember the challenge that Goliath had set? He said that if somebody killed him, they would all be slaves. So they were scared and ran away. David had helped, sorry, God had helped David slay the giant. What enabled David to defeat the giant? Can you think of words to describe how he might be feeling or acting? How is this story relevant to your life today? Well, let's have a look at our task and find out. David's courage came from his faith in God. We will never face a giant such as Goliath in our lives, but we face giants of another kind in our daily lives. We may face challenges, which we can call giants, in our daily life, from having assessments at school to apologising for mistakes we have made. Can you list a few? Talk about this to a family member if you can. And once again, here's another image with a portrayal of David with his slingshot and the huge giant Goliath. Again, they look quite different from the other images we've seen, but you can see all of the soldiers in the background and the terrifying situation that David would have been faced with. So David defeated the giant with five stones. Each one of these stones represents a quality his faith gave him. Courage to be brave. Confidence to have faith in yourself. Preparation to be well prepared. Trust to trust in yourself and in God. And victory which means to have success. The first stone represents courage. David was not afraid to face the enemy. Don't worry about a thing, David told Saul. I will fight this Philistine. Christians believe it takes courage to fight the giants we face in our lives. They believe that their faith in God gives them that courage. The second stone presents, represents confidence. As a shepherd, David often had to protect the sheep from wild animals. This gave him the confidence he needed to face the giant. Christians have confidence that God will help them overcome their problems they face each day. The third stone represents preparation. David didn't go to face the giant unprepared. He went down to the stream and picked out five smooth stones. Then armed with shepherd stuff and sling, he started out to fight Goliath. 
Christians believe it is important to do everything possible to be prepared to face their challenges. It isn't all down to God. The fourth stone represents trust. David did not trust his own ability to slay the giant. He placed his trust in God. When Goliath shouted at David, cursed him and was ready to kill him, David said, You come to me with a sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of Lord God Almighty. Christians believe that when they are faced with a problem, they should put their faith in God and their trust in God. The fifth and final stone represents victory. It is God's battle, not ours, David said. That is why David was able to win the victory over the giant with only a stone and sling. Christians believe that when you ask God for help, he will help you overcome the obstacles in your life. So Year 4s, here's your task today. Use the sheet provided on the HJS Home Learning website or write it off in your own way. If you're going to do bronze, write each of the qualities of faith on the stones for David. Explain how each quality helped him. Silver, choose one of the problems on the next slide and explain how each quality of faith would help you overcome the problem. Gold, write your own problem and explain how each quality of faith would help you overcome the problem. Challenge, what can we learn from the story of David and Goliath? that is still relevant today. Pause this video now while you decide which task you will do. Okay, if you're doing silver, let's have a look. Using each of the five stones, explain how you would overcome a problem. Here are some problems you can use for silver or write your own problem for gold. You may use the worksheets provided or write it up in your own way. Remember, your five stones and your five things you're going to explain are courage, confidence, preparation, trust and victory. Problem one. You have broken your mum's best vase. She will be cross. How can you show courage, confidence, preparation, trust and victory for this problem? Problem two. It's sports day and you aren't a fast runner. You really don't like the races. How can you show courage, confidence, preparation, trust and victory? Well, a model written answer may look like this for silver or gold. Remember our problem? I have a math test tomorrow. I'm worried about it. Let's have a look. For courage, we might say, I need courage to get into school and take the test. Confidence. I have taken other tests before. I need confidence that I will do as well as I can. Preparation. I will get my mum or dad or someone else at home to test me so that I am prepared for the test. Trust. I have done everything I can to get ready for this test, so I need to trust in myself or God to help me do the best. Victory. You have taken the test and got through it. Now there's just a little note from Miss Bell. She says, remember this is a Bible story that I use to get a message across. We do not throw stones at each other. You knew that already, she says, I know. I'm just checking. Now one thing that would be lovely to do for Mrs. Bell when you get back is to paint an inspirational message on smooth pebbles or stones. Use paint mixed with PVA, which is glue. If you don't have paint or PVA, don't worry. You could use Sharpie pens, normal felt tip pens, or even watercolours. Be creative and work out how you could best do it. If you do have a go, please bring them in to show me, Miss Bell, when school reopens. I love this sort of thing. She might even put it into her allotment garden. Take care, says Miss Bell. I'm sorry that she can't be reading this to you, but I hope you enjoyed hearing Mrs Alhasso's voice. And I know Miss Bell will be delighted if you give it a go doing the work today and doing an amazing pebble to bring back into HJS. We all miss you and we hope you're keeping safe. Bye Year 4s, take care.